Welcome, Dr. Addy. I'm excited about the topic today. I'm always excited about the topic, but I, um, but you know how I feel about this one. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you so we can get rocking and rolling. Thank you, Tammy. Yeah, folks, I'm, I'm glad that you're with us today. It's good to see you. I know it's been a little bit of a break for me at this point, but again, you'll get to see me again in two weeks, so it won't be that long. So today, we, we, I touched upon this subject, I guess, maybe a couple months ago, um, but I want to go a little bit more in depth with it. And what It's what I call the pain field of betrayal trauma. And I think that I, you know, this is a very critical component of the entire recovery slash healing process that those who betray just keep stumbling and stumbling and stumbling. So again, one of the most troubling issues, as you well know, in all of this is a betrayer's inability to cope with their partner's trauma. Um, so this concept that I created, which is basically a metaphor, the pain field, what it does, it gives you this visual representation of what is required of those who are betrayed to be able to accomplish the role of being able to help their partner to heal. So the pain field, as, as you all know, is not a place any individual chooses to visit, um, but they've been thrown into it. You've all been thrown onto this field. And part of what you're wondering is, do I ever get a chance to leave? Because it is a very emotional terrain that you have to endure. It is a place that's full of despair and fear. And there's many times that healing just doesn't seem to be obtainable. You know, we've seen people who've been on this field for 30 plus years. And you know what? That just, that's just not acceptable. That's not acceptable. No one should have to languish in that state for so long. We need to do more to be able to shorten the duration of the turmoil that you're facing. You know, you wind up spending like years and years just kind of wandering back and forth. And it's, again, it seems so hopeless. But then what we have among this, also on the pain field, is you have the, you're looking for comfort from those who hurt you, okay? You want them to understand the depth of your pain, which frankly, unless they've been betrayed, I'm not sure they ever could fully understand what it is, but they can get close. And the other aspect of it is, if you want clarity about their infidelity, you want to talk to a uh, betrayed partner yesterday whose husband dealt with same-sex attraction, and it's the one thing that she was saying to you, I need to know what drove this, because I will never have a peace, I'll never have any peace within me if I continue to think that it's something about me or if it's something that he he is really gay or bisexual. And I told her, we're going to find that answer for you. We're going to find that answer and we're going to give it to you. We're going to give it to you straight, no matter what it is, so that you then can make a, a rational decision of what, what you want to do. But the big problem with the pain field is there are many betrayers who really find it difficult to deal with the pain field. In fact, it's more difficult than it is to become and remain sober. You've heard me probably say at times without maybe labeling it the pain field, that what I've said is that this is the hill that most of them die on. And when they die, what they do, they wind up taking the relationship with them. And there's no reason for that. The reason that's happening is because their anxiety increases when their partner is grieving. And that leads them to go and to seek some sort of comfort using defensiveness, gaslighting, lying, withdrawing, becoming aggressive with the goal to shut it down. They want to turn the noise off. That's what they're trying to do, which is a major problem because as I tell the men I work with, when she grieves, 
she's healing. You stop that process, and all you've done is you've kicked her pain down the road. Right? You need to allow her to be able to grieve. These guys, though, they look at this and they say, oh my gosh, it doesn't look like grieving to me. It looks like hostility. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. But when they shut this down, when they make the attempt to shut it down, and, and gentlemen, this is really important, your partner, your betrayed partner's inner child, and yes, she or he has an inner child also, becomes fearful that they're being abandoned again, or even worse yet, that they're being attacked, all right? And this is where emotional escalation will occur, and it's where situations then can become very volatile. You know, what you have done unknowingly is you have thrown fuel on the fire. Now, there's a lot of talk about well, you know what? Help her regulate. I'm sorry. You're not going to be able to help her regulate. You know, she has to learn to regulate, emotionally regulate on her own. However, what you need to make sure you don't do is aggravate. And you do that when you throw fuel on the fire. You throw fuel on the fire in many different ways, especially when you try to shut down the hostility, when you do try to be gaslight, when you try to lie, when you try to minimize, when you try to be defensive, all those things, hoping that that pain will go away, just does nothing but it just it gives you a, what is it called, a backflash or whatever, that was in the fire world. You know, it, it just going to get worse for you at that point. Instead, you have to be able to stay there. And what you really need to do is we're going to try not to, again, throw fuel on the fire. But what we're going to do is hopefully be able to see what is her pain point. That's the most important element. What is her pain point? And, you know, what I hear many guys say, well, I know what it is, I cheated, or I watched porn. Not the pain point. It, it's the symptom of what you did. And yes, that might be her initial complaint. It may be her initial, she may still be bringing it up. But you've got to go deeper to understand what is the true pain point. Because again, when we're struggling, when you're on that pain field and you're struggling to deal with what you see as hostility, okay, that is because you're turning inward. You're becoming inwardly focused. And what that means that if your pain, oh my gosh, I don't deserve this, or oh my gosh, this is too intense, or oh my gosh, I feel so shamed, your pain trumps her pain. Nobody's healing. She is not healing with that. Okay? And you have to put your pain aside and be able to deal with it in a very, very different way. Okay, It has to be the focus on her and her pain points. So let's take, let's do, let's do this little exercise. Okay. Um, and you know, Tammy, you want to help me out here with this? Happy to. Talk, okay, you talk about the scenario that's there, right? There's a scenario that happens, and then I'll give three possible answers, okay? Uh, it, there'd be number one, number two, number three. And if you guys want to, in the chat, put in what do you think is the right answer? Is that okay? If the chat is, I'm not sure it's activated because we had an issue with it a long time ago. So, okay. but feel free to put it in the Q&A. You can just okay. type in a, something okay. in the Q&A and we'll see it. Okay, okay, so so we're out shopping and, and she accuses you of staring at another woman. You tell her she is wrong and that she ha was not, or and that was not what you were doing. What is her pain point? Your uh, eyes, uh, oh, right, go ahead. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no, 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 I'll let you do it, but there's three options. So there's number one, number two, number three, okay? Yep. So go ahead. So number one is your eyes are wandering. 
Number two, you are being defensive. Number three, I am not what you desire. So which put it in the uh, in the questions there. Again, give them one more time. Tammy, what are they? One, two, three. So number one was your eyes are, are wandering. Number two, you are being defensive. Number three, I am not what you desire. And we're looking so the at question, the question, what is your pain point? Right. What, what is, is her she, pain point? Right. Sorry, what is yeah. her pain point that we have here? And I'm looking through these. And again, number one is the symptom. Your eyes are wandering. Yeah, that's what, that's what you're going to get initially. Your eyes are wandering. Okay. But if you don't drill down to figure out what the real pain point is, you're playing on this field, trying to talk about the fact that she's saying my eyes are wandering and I don't think they are. And she's on this pain field. So therefore, the other symptom is you're being defensive. The pain point most likely is I'm not what you desire. You rather look at these women. Okay. So she's over here on this field. You're over here on this field. And you want to know why nothing gets resolved. That's part of the reason that you have to be so I need to drill down and find out what is that pain point. So let's give them one more example. Okay, so the next example, oops, I lost my paper, hang on. Um, so my next example, or the next example is, you leave work without calling her uh, to tell her that you're on your way home, which of her boundary, or which was one of her boundaries. Okay, so I, leaving work, didn't call, that was supposed to be part of your boundaries. What's her pain point? Number one, you did not call. Uh, two, you are lying or trying to be intentionally hurt me. I'm sorry, the type is like close enough. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can throw that guy. Three, you broke your promise. Okay, so what, let's give it to him one more time. So number one is you did not call. Number two is you are trying to intentionally hurt her. Um, and number three is you broke your promise. Okay, let's see what we get. One, two, and three. Oh, you guys are acing this. You're acing it. Okay. Uh, it's most likely. Now, number one is, again, the symptom. Mm -hmm. Okay, what happened? Okay. Number two, there might be, could be some women who have that that's what's going on. You did that intentionally. You're being passive aggressive. That could be. But in most cases, it's going to be the idea you broke a promise. You broke a promise. And and right, whenever you say you will do something, whenever you say you'll do something, okay, then that is what's happening. You are breaking a promise. And I've had men argue that with me at times. That's not a promise. A, no, it is a promise. Okay, you said you would do something. That is a promise. Okay, what a prom promises are only for certain actions certain events no no everything that you promise to do everything you say i'm going to do is a promise so anyway i just wanted to touch upon that because again this is so important that is how you wind up staying on the same pain pain field together by doing that so i did want to also let you know real quickly that and you can mark your calendars on april 11th which again it's you know five months away but the way time flies It'll be here before you know yes. it. On April 11th, I'm doing a six-hour workshop, okay, on this, about be, being more emotionally developed and how to engage your betrayed partner. So if you want some more information, you want to be put on the list, find out, just send me an uh, email at uh, innerchildmodel at gmail.com, okay, innerchildmodel at gmail.com. So, Tammy, that's what I got for you today. Okay, and I'm cleaning through the answers, but we do have questions. So let's start with the first one. Can you talk about the need for an honest, full therapeutic disclosure to heal while remaining in a relationship with the addict? Absolutely. You know, the thing is that I hear very often, you know, the the addict will say, oh, I told her everything. Okay, I told her. Even, even if it was drips and drabs here and there, but I, 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 she knows everything. So why do we have to go through this again? Now, what, what is this? Again, inwardly focused, shame. I don't want to have to go through this. All right, so you've told her everything. 
You gave her a piece over here, you gave her a piece over there, you put a piece over here, there's a piece back there, there's a piece under here, and a piece up there. You have all these pieces. What a therapeutic disclosure does is gives us a very linear look at what had been the issue. And in my, like, for me, and I think a large majority of therapists do this also, if we go back to the beginning of your sexual story, what went on? What were the things you encountered? So that we could start to maybe see, is there a pattern? And then bring it through to the end. So that's the importance of that therapeutic disclosure. She sees the complete picture. She has it all in front of her. So therefore, then instead of hovering up above the ground, wondering what's next, she could put both feet on the ground and breathe. There's another aspect, though, and that is for the betrayer. That in, I, I don't, I can't even think of a case that after it is over, it's a sense of relief. It's a sense of I've let I've let this all out. I've let it all go, and therefore there becomes a bit of a calmness. This is also really and Tammy, tell me whether you agree with this or not. After a disclosure, that's really pretty much kind of the kickoff for, okay, let the healing process begin. This is where grieving really starts to take off. Would you say yes or no? Would you say yes? I, I always say a good, and that means, you know, a well-done formal therapy disclosure sets the foundation for healing. And yeah, healing, there's grief and all, and all of those things. And so, so my only caveat to this is, unless the partner does not, not every partner wants a formal therapeutic disclosure, you know? So, so if it's the addict that's going like, Oh yeah, no, we don't do it. Then I'm hundred percent. What you're saying is like, yeah, no, she already knows everything, all of that. But there are some partners that are going, I know it's enough and I'm focused on moving forward and yeah, we all, dealt with all good. Them. Dealt with them. Yeah. And you know what? We yeah. respect that. Yeah. We respect that. We're not going to try to push anybody to sit to a disclosure if they don't want it. So yes. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I'm with you. It sets a foundation if it's done well. Correctly, yes. And and if you're an addict going like, well, I'm not, you know, I already told her part of that one and she knows enough. And but there's this really painful detail. And how many times do we hear this a lot? Where I've withheld something intentionally. There's a difference between I don't remember, but then there's a whole process for, oh, I remember something else and right. we're going to, we have a plan for that, you know, so, yeah. but it's that intentional stuff that always comes back to bite. Let me, let me throw one more thing in there. Okay? Sure. If you go to someone to do a disclosure and let's say they have a staff of other therapists and what they do is they give you to one of the junior people to say, they're going to walk you through all the details and, and, and get the story done. That is not what you want. You need somebody who's been through this process. You need somebody who knows it inside and out. You need somebody who knows all the pitfalls. That's what we need. If they want to have that person shadow them, fine. That's okay. But they should not have seen it way too often. They dump it off on somebody else who doesn't really have the skill set, doesn't fully understand it. They may have taken a, you know, a class on it, but they're not ready. And we have a nightmare of a disclosure. So, so one more thing on disclosure. Dr. Rob and our clinical director, Aaron Snow, alternate for the peer case consultation group weekly with professionals who are trained in all this stuff. Do you know what the number one topic is? Formal therapeutic disclosure. Absolutely. So you do want qualified professionals. You do not want to do this yourself. You yeah. don't, the drip drips are horrible and traumatizing, makes things worse for partners. So, mm. so we don't expect anybody to know how to do this stuff like get professional help, get qualified professional help. That's, you know, then you have the best chance at setting that really solid foundation on which to build. So, okay. So the next one is two. I want advice on what to do when my wife comes home, irritable and angry. She had a bad day at work. She's overwhelmed and tired. She is home like three to five minutes and begins the criticism, shame, blame, and belittling comments. There's always a grain of truth to her comments, but it hurts a lot. 
I try to lean into empathy and mirroring and AVR, but at some point her anger outstrips my distress tolerance and shame resilience. I am trying to work on boundaries. I shouldn't be the doormat due to her bad day. We're over 4.5 years into this. She is doing her work, but has a lot of PTSD. I'm the betrayer and have four years abstinence. I do my work, CSAT, EMDR groups, steps, et cetera. She is improving, but it's still bad. I have to tap out sometimes, which triggers her abandonment wounds. Yes. Well, you know what? There are times you are going to have to step away. If it just goes on and on and on, there's nothing being done. And especially if, if your window of tolerance is shrinking, to be able to say, hey, I need to take a break from all of this to do it. Um, so what might be happening here? I don't know if it's happening. I don't think you're the one who should bring it up to her. But again, we go back to her PTSD. And perhaps, maybe, some, if you are doing everything that you say you're doing, and you feel like you've been, you know, you're doing the right thing when she's hurting and showing empathy and mirror, you know, all of that, validating, then maybe it is stuff from her past that is hindering her ability to heal today. And that's what the new book, which Tammy helped us to put together, Going Deeper for the Betrayed Partner, is about. And that might be something she wants to examine. I really don't like the idea of the betrayer saying, hey, here's a book, because I think you're the problem. I, I don't. So somehow maybe she can... Find it. Watch somehow. this video. Watch this video. Um, again, because I think, it, 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 you know what? If, so let me say this to any woman who's listening and saying, oh, well, I don't want to read that because it's not, I'm not the problem. I'm not saying you're the problem. What I'm saying is, what we're saying is, we want you to heal. And sometimes you got to look under different rocks because you know what? The rocks you've been looking on under, they're not, there's nothing there. You're not getting anything. So maybe you have to go through and look at a, a different rock. And that might be this. It may be this approach. And there's nothing, all, it, all it's saying is that, you know what? It is past trauma that is still hurting you today. That's all. Not saying there's anything wrong with you. Not saying you're to blame. It's just saying that, you know what? I, I am, I'm struggling because my inner child, my little girl or little boy is taking the pain I now have, which means I should come home and my anxiety should be like a four or five instead of a 10. We got to bring it back down here so that it makes it easier for you so that you start to feel better about yourself. And I was thinking on a really practical terms, like not when you're in this, but I say, I'm, I'm going to let you come into the house. I'm going to let you go for a walk or take a bubble bath, go do something so that you get a chance to regulate. I'm going to not be around you for 15, 20 minutes or whatever time frame you need. And then when, you know, when you've had time to process through your day or do whatever, then I, you know, I would be happy to be that. But if, if this is the, you know, the way every interaction is, that's detrimental for both of you. I can't, I, I would dread having my spouse come home and I would dread coming home, you know, um, uh, if that was the case. And so, so I would change the path and I would be clear. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like not do, I would say, you know, this is, has been a pattern we're in and we're stuck. And so I'm, my suggestion is this, do you have another idea, but you know, um, like disrupt the pattern. Okay. Next question. Um, uh, I have told my wife that I can be present for about two hours, maybe three, which is I can be open and care, but then I get overwhelmed. Oh, you're way better than me. There's no way I could deal with that. I have told my wife this, and she told me that I have to just take it because it's her way of healing over two years with no timeouts. It's not about turning her off. I'm willing to do this seven days a week, but I can't do it five to eight hours straight. Oh, okay. All right. Oh so, my God. I'm so I'm in pain. Right. Just thinking. Okay. About all right. So Cammy. Yes. You would you would uh, confirm that I am a strong advocate for the betrayed partner, right? You and me both, absolutely. Yeah, fine. You too, right? Okay. In this case, if 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 
this guy if what we're reading is true yes i get you yeah true and i'm getting a chance to talk to his partner she is doing herself a grave injustice a grave injustice because there is nothing good coming out of this nothing good coming out of this i mean if you again if this goes back to the last question you are stuck in this negative cycle that you are drowning you're drowning because i guarantee you, you know what she doesn't want to sit there for hours on end doing this she really does that's not what she wants therefore for you the one who's been betrayed i strongly encourage you to be talking to you, your therapist about what you can do, as Tammy just said before, to do something different to break the cycle. Because this, nothing gets accomplished. And what are we supposed to be accomplishing? We're supposed to be accomplishing getting to the other side. We're supposed to be accomplishing being able to take the problem that we have, resolving it, and then repairing to a point that we've never repaired before, that we've never been before, we've never bonded this way before. You can't do it with this. This isn't gonna bond. You're not gonna, there will be no bonding here. So again, if he's being accurate, what he's saying, this is one of these cases. This is why we wrote that book, because there's something else there, and we have to find out what that is. So Erin Snow, our clinical director, does the alternating Monday night webinars. She has owned, so I'm not telling tales, that she's a betrayed partner. And she has talked about how it is most important for her to stay regulated, regardless of what's going on, for her to not forfeit her regulation. And yeah. and so so this just feels like dysregulation. You know, we've shared on, on webinars before, scheduling a time, and it's like 20 minutes, 30 max, like hours of dredging through the same stuff like i mean ad nauseum there is no regulation for your partner and there's no regulation for you and again that would be one of those where like you know how how difficult it must be for each and both of you no and 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 i and i you know and i don't use abusive often but like there there is nothing we did or didn't do you know that deserves to be you know um flogged for years and years and years afterwards and it doesn't help like it doesn't change what you did and it doesn't help you heal the relationship to move forward. If you mm -hmm. are doing your recovery work, then you can show up differently, um, you know, for for yourself and for the relationship. And there are some betrayed partners that they are just hell bent on punishing. And if that's yes. the case, if that's the case, you have to ask yourself why. Why? Oh, well, I want him to feel the pain I felt. Well, I think he's gotten that after a while. When did it end? When, when do you say, okay, you know what? I think you have suffered because you know what? In order for him to suffer, you have to continue to suffer. Yes. Yeah. But what's the benefit of all that? So, and I, and I, I always, I'm not, not minimizing her pain. Okay. Yeah. I know she's in pain, but we got to do something about the pain. And whatever you're doing right now is not working. You need to find something different, whether it's a different therapist, it's a different group, whatever it may be, you need to find a way out of this hell that you're in. I often share what is the goal. And if the goal is to make That's each other right, miserable yeah. for the next 10 years, a mm -hmm. great job. You know, if your goal is to heal, each individually in the relationship, then what's happening here is, is I'm serious. I have an upset stomach thinking about, you know, like you guys coming home every day and having to deal with hours of this, you know, I, I, I don't know how you get any rest or no. peace. So you are, they are living hell on earth. That's yeah. what they're doing. They're living hell on earth. So a couple of quick um, comments. Don't litigate yeah. her feeling. It's how she feels. Do not justify, deny, minimize, or explain. Ask. You are important to me. So how can I, how you feel is important to me. Let's come up with a plan uh, when we go out so you feel safe. So that's a. Okay. Curiosity. Mm -hmm. Pain point for not calling. 
can't keep agreements, no trust, feels not important. As you remember business meetings, plan together so that there is no excuses and set a timer. It's true. You can remember a lot of things. You can't remember anything that about me. So. Addicts are being studied by their partners for data. If you remember other things and not your agreements, it's a lot of data for partners. Say nothing, change your behavior. I like that one too. Yeah. And then this one too. You don't have to say, I promise for it to be a promise. And I, like, I love that our company is called Seeking Integrity. Integrity is if I say I'm going to do something, I, I do it. I don't have this caveat of like, well, if I remember or whatever, you know, um, it, it, like I want my word to be my truth. Mm -hmm. Um, what should I do to help my wife when she is triggered? Okay, well, I guess I could do a whole show on this one. All right, so first and foremost, what I just mentioned before, one, you can help her by not throwing fuel on the fire, okay, which means being defensive, you know, trying to minimize her problem, trying to dismiss it. You need to be attentive. Attentive is not just that I'm here. Attentive me is also body language. And one client, he sits there like this when she's talking to him. Wow. What do you think? What do you think she's thinking? Why he's like this? Like, oh God, am I bothering you? Yeah. Right? She's about being attentive. It's about really carefully listening to certain words. So therefore, what you could do is pick up the pain point that's there and then come back with her. Curiosity is a huge to be able to ask questions about what's going on or what she's feeling. And that doesn't mean, so how are you doing? That, that's not what we're talking about. But being curious is huge because what you're also doing is if she becomes curious, you're taking the prefrontal cortex and you're making it more activated, which is what we want to do, which means that the limbic system will calm down somewhat. So there's that approach that also gets involved. Um, yeah, those are just some. There are many. I think if you go back and you look at the um, the uh, different the series, the webinars that are here on Seeking Integrity, and not just mine, but there are many of them that are here. Look at the title, and you're going to find a host of different, um, I don't want to call them strategies. They're not strategies. Of, of, of skills that you need to be able to help. But the one thing is, do not wilt. You've got to be strong. You have to let things roll off that are coming at you. Don't see hostility. See pain. Look for her little girl. So I'm going to skip to the bottom because somebody said, this is starting to feel a lot like blaming on the betrayed. Can you, can oh. we talk about this a bit? Sure. This was before okay. this last one. So Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And once again, you're right. They're, 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 well, let me, let's go back to the answer before. Two years, three years, the woman comes home every day, and it's three, four, five hours. Um, yeah, you know what? I am putting some blame on her. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I am. Because I don't think she's handling the situation in a healthy way. I understand she's hurt, but that is not going to help her. That's not going to get her to a place where she's ultimately going to feel healthy, where she's going to feel feel happy again, feel joyful again. She's never going to get there. In fact, they're going to probably just continue to dig, dig a hole deeper and deeper and deeper. So yeah, I I am. Let's be honest. That's what's happening. I'm putting some blame in that in that uh, in that scenario. When it comes to going back and looking at the past to see how it might be influencing what's going on today, I, that's, not, that's not about blame. That is, again, another tool that a person who has been betrayed can utilize to see if they can heal. It isn't about her healing. It's about empowering the betrayed partner. Right? It's not about saying, oh, he's off the hook. It's not saying he's not to blame. It's not saying he, what he did was okay. Nothing like that. All this is about is her healing. I want you women to heal. I've seen so much hurt. I caused her. And, I, and, I, and I've seen so much over the last 13 years. Devastation. 
women when I was doing my practice, you know, in the office, you know, curled up in a fetal position on my couch. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. But I've also seen women who are terrified of the fact of, oh my gosh, let's try to go back to where we would, and we're not supposed to go back to where you were, but let's try to see if we can make it work. They're terrified. And the reason they're terrified is if I give him another chance, how do I know he won't do it again? Well, you know what? I can't guarantee that. No one can. But there are many telltale signs that and that he can give. There are many things that you can see changes in his personality, in his demeanor, in his approach to you that can make you say, well, different. So maybe be different with all of these other things, then maybe he is different when it comes to you is acting out before. Sometimes, yeah, you have to roll the dice. The truth. Sometimes you have to roll it. But if you don't, you're just going to stay in the set pool. So no, I'm not blaming with the exception of those who want us, who just, they're not getting out of the set pool. And I'm sorry, they're the way out of the set pool. Even if you have to leave the marriage. Okay, go back to Michelle Mays. And that's the one thing Michelle Mays says, you know, in order to really heal, you have to first come to grip with the fact that, you know what, the relationship's not the most important thing here. It is my health, my well-being, and my happiness. That's the first thing. It is. And we lose sight of it. You lose sight of that. I don't want you to lose sight of it, and that's why I'm bringing it up. So, yes, so if you think I'm blaming you for that, I'm sorry. That is not the intention. That is not at all what's going on here. It is about empowering you. Thank you. That's the word I was like, if I take responsibility for my, you know, emotional well-being. Um, uh, so, so I'm in a season of there have been dysregulating things out, external things. I, I can't change those. Like, like there's actually a lot. And the one thing that I know for sure is, you know, like I've got no control over that, but I can, I can choose how I show up for myself, you know, and I don't have to uh, permit everything out there to, you know, to cause me to have earthquakes, you know? And so it was like blaming. It's almost like responsibility. And John Taylor is actually in a series on his webinars um, with relational responsibility. And I think that would tie in really well. So check out, he started the series last Thursday that that's been posted, but I was thinking the same thing. It isn't blaming. It's empowering. Like, do you want to do, you, I mean, if somebody wants to come home and they like, again, zero judgment, if you, if this is what your routine is, and rather than having an enjoyable dinner, you choose to have a fight for three hours, all, all good. It would, you know, because it's not what I would choose does not mean it's not okay for you. But at some point, but if you Cammie, want, but Tammy, it's not okay for them. It's I'm not sorry. okay. It's, I don't think it's so not either. okay. okay. They, they, okay. they, it's they, very have, they, have, they have to remove the scale from your eyes that he put there. Yeah. Remove them. Take a risk. Take a chance for yourself. Not for him. Not for your marriage. Not for your kids. For you. Do it for you. Let it go. Well said. Next question. How would you explain to the, the addict that his skill set is lower than acceptable standards and that the health of the relationship is kept because of this? You should be on some of my calls that I have with people. <laughs> um, it, it is explained in no uncertain terms. Um, I make it very clear about how what they're doing is they're exacerbating the situation. They are taking a bad situation and they're making it worse. And then I explain to them what that looks like. Can I sit here and go through that with you now? No, I can't. It is, there's many things. And maybe I'll do a show about that. Maybe we can, that would be great. we can do something where I can actually lay some of that out. But the idea is, and yes, tell them the relationship, she will never, never, one, heal, Number two, trust. And number three, bond with you. 
if you do not show that you can be compassionate, be empathetic, be understanding, be gracious, and be humble. So therefore, she throws something out and it's an accusation and it's not true. You don't come back with, no, that's, you're wrong, which is what we saw before. No, instead of, again, you know what? I understand why you think that. It makes perfect sense because of, I've lied to you in the past about things. Do you mind if I tell you what is really happening? And you ask permission for it. Or if you don't understand what's happening, you ask the question. So tell me, why do you make that accusation? Because I don't quite understand. And of course, the answer you're going to get back is, don't give me this fact you don't understand. I know you understand. Blah, blah, blah. I just don't understand. I wish I did. I'm not trying to play a game with you here. I want more clarity. I need more data. Can you please give that to me? That's where you go. You stay there. And your demeanor is so critical. It is so critical. And again, you can't have a good demeanor if you're going to allow your inner child to be running the dialogue. Because all he's going to be saying is, this has been fair, this has been right, she can be mean. How come she doesn't trust us anymore? I've done everything I needed to do. You know, this is, I don't deserve it. That, that's what the kid is going to do. How long you want to be continue having your life run by raw emotions versus running your life based on rational thinking and reasoning? So, and I think partners can heal regardless of what the addict is doing or not doing. Sometimes it's, they have to heal outside the relationship. But with this one, I'm going to like, like, I think, I, you know, I think a, a possible uh, way to go with this would be, I want to be in a relationship with you and I want to have a future with you, but your behaviors or your lack of positive action right now are, are keeping us from being able to do that. So I'm going to be over here taking care of myself. I'm going to be on the webinars. I'm going to be on the dropping groups. I'm going to be connecting with friends and family. I'm going to be doing positive and joy filling things for myself while I'm waiting to see. Somebody said earlier, it's data. What you're doing and not doing is, is data. I'm hopeful that you will lean into you know, the recovery work and learn tools to use to do things differently because then we can have a future together, mm -hmm. you know, if that's the goal. You know, that's that's really interesting what you just talked about, Tammy. I'm going to derail this whole thing right now, okay? Because those, the women who take that attitude that, you know what, I would like us to see if we can work this out. But right now, what I'm seeing from you, even though you're telling me you're not acting out, okay, but you're you're not being empathetic, you're not being, you know, caring, you're not being kind, nothing. So you know what? I'm not even gonna start, I'm not even gonna be looking at that and judging you anymore. Instead, I'll go over here, I'm gonna stay in my lane, I'm gonna do my work, we'll be cordial, we'll be friendly, we'll do that, but and then I'm just gonna watch. I'm gonna watch. And if you really want me, if you really want me, you will do the things you need to change. And I will see that. I will not have to ask for it anymore. I will see it. And those are the people who will wind up getting out of the set pool with him or without him. Yeah. And it's a scary place for partners to go because it's like, like I am actually going to commit you know, to, to taking myself as the priority, not the relate, like you said earlier, not him, not the relationship. I have got to prioritize myself and my mm -hmm. well-being. And this happening over here is, is not even healthy. I mean, I hear, right. and you do too, women all the time, partners who have, you know, chronic post-traumatic stress disorder have physical manifestations, medical oh. complications due to their health or for their health due to this. Mm -hmm. How many, how many partners I've heard who wind up, and again, we don't have the correlation, we, we can't really correlate it, but wind up uh, getting cancer. Now, again, you have to remember, when you're in this state of mind, like, for example, if you're sitting coming home and it's like two, three hours every day, what running through your body, what you're producing is cortisol. 
cortisol, yeah. Cortisol, healthy, we need it. It helps us with movement, things like that. It actually can reduce inflammation. The overabundance produces inflammation. What does inflammation do? Inflammation kills cells. And that's where you get your chronic problems, your arthritis, things like that. So yeah, you're making yourself sick. You're making yourself sick. So therefore, you're taking a bad problem. Okay, he was unfaithful to me. He was looking at porn, whatever it was. And now what you're doing is you're taking it, and now you're making it, making you ill. Oh, am I blaming you? Uh, yeah, in a way, I guess I am. I'm sorry. Because, again, you have a choice. And that choice could be, you know what? I'm going to let him try to do what he needs to do, but I have to take care of me. I have to take care of me. He didn't. And he may not. And I'm not going to worry about that. I am going to worry about me and my health, my well-being. And I've seen women do that. And, oh, my God, they're, they're thriving. And some of them, yes, they're still, actually, a large majority of them are still in a relationship. Because as, as he's watching her grow and stuff like that, he's like, oh, my God, am I going to be left behind? And sometimes that kick in the butt will get them moving. Agreed. Okay, next question. My cheating spouse painted a very ugly picture about me to his family and thus completely ruined their opinion about me as a person. He had a heart attack in June and I tried to make peace with his sister in the hospital even though I did nothing wrong. She refused to accept my peace offering when um, are not, or we are not living together and her influence on him created additional problems. Should he have a conversation with her about his action and influence on him in our relationship? First and foremost, you should have never had the first conversation. But yes, he should go back. You should go back to them and say, you know what? What I told you was erroneous or was exaggerated or whatever it was. He should definitely be the one. He made the mess and he should clean it up. You shouldn't have to clean it up. I, I applaud you for making the effort. I'm sorry that she, you know, refused to allow to accept that from you. That was you know, very ill-willed of her to do so. But yes, he's the one to do it. And you know what? If she decides she doesn't, you know what? She was never that close to begin with. If she's going to write you off because of some stuff he said, and is she not factoring in maybe some of the pain that he caused you? Again, be true to yourself. If I have to end this whole thing with anything, Tammy, I think that's what this will all be today. Be true to yourself. I, and I was thinking, I don't know if your cheating partner is actually in any kind of recovery. It doesn't sound like it. You're separated and things like that. Uh, and I'm really clear that there are people in my life that I, that I respect their opinion. And if they said something, you know, about me or something, it would be something I would actually look at. And then there's other people who, uh, you know, anybody who is willing to believe the false things and, and everything else, they aren't in my close circle. Those are people that their opinions of me, you know, I, I, I can't let them affect me. So what he's saying, you know, he's a cheater. He's been lying for years and, and they're, they're buying in. So I, again, be true to yourself, like Dr. Eddie is saying, and her opinion of you, like, don't let her opinion matter you matter her yeah. opinion does not okay it's not it's not hard for people it's hard for it, people it is it, 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 yes but i'm really like like i said i'm really clear on that person do i value them like like are they somebody mm -hmm. that their opinion would be really meaningful to me maybe maybe not so but if she's willing to buy into all of that stuff and not see truth in I don't have control over that. Um, so I'm looking for information on how to not table turn being defensive gas lighting. I'm, I'm thinking this is the uh, betrayer partner saying, you know, I, do I not I'm be turning... defensive. How do I not be defensive? Yeah, well, right. The big, if you're not validating, you're probably going to be defensive. Okay. Again, defensiveness is very inwardly focused. And you're, no, you're supposed to be staying outwardly focused. You're supposed to be looking for that pain point. You're supposed to be seeing her little girl. You're not supposed to see hostility. You're supposed to see pain. 
that will help you from gaslighting. It'll help you from being defensive. But when you validate someone, okay, again, uh, you know, let's say they, they say something and it's not true. You know what? I understand. I've told you so many lies in the past. You would, why would you believe me? I, I understand you wouldn't believe me. However, I would like to explain what is going on here right now. And now, again, as I said, you're probably going to hear, I don't need any of your explanations. I've heard so many of like, all right, then I won't. Then don't, then just leave it. Leave it. And then wait until later or maybe the next day she's now regulated and come back and say, hey, I would like to pick up the conversation that we were having yesterday where you brought up this point and I'd like to explain to you what is really going on. Calm. Slow everything down. I, I refer to you often as, as Dr. Eddie says, slow everything down. So you're on other webinars, even if you're not there. So Okay. <laughs> okay. So how would you explain building safety in this kind of a relationship with an addict? Um, it's not curable and it's one day at a time for a daily reprieve. There's no new man uh, or is it one day at a time? It, uh, is it not true that there's no real safety in this type of relationship? Hard to hear, but is this not the truth? Okay. So is there no cure? Let's let's talk about what we're what we're dealing with here first. Okay. One, we then with an addictive brain and we're dealing with a compulsive disorder. It's, yes, I agree. I don't I don't believe it's cured. I believe it's managed. Now again, there's great debate in our industry about all of this. Okay. We I can get 10 of my peers together, we might get 10 different answers about this subject. But this is my belief. My belief is that, you know what, I will always have an addictive brain. I will always have a compulsive disorder. Yet, yet, I have many of the tools necessary to be able to manage them, including the one we just talked about a moment ago. Slow everything down. So for that, However, and I think also when people are in active addiction and, and they're just at the very beginning, I do one day at a time. It is. That's what we're doing. One day at a time. However, we reach a point. If you continue to do the work and you continue to put in the emphasis and I realize, ooh, you know what? If I have the humbleness that, you know what? Anyone could fall. I could fall. Right? If I have that, I could be in a place you know what? You could sound so you could surround me by with 10 different women, and I'd be like, whatever. They're they're people. They're people. There, there's nothing there that's activated because I refuse to allow anything to get activated. And that becomes a new mindset. But more importantly, it becomes that go back to your second point, the new man. And that is the man of integrity. Seeking integrity, that's what they're doing here with their, with their organization, is a man of integrity, is a man who, who is transforming. You know, you guys know for me, a lot of it is with my faith, okay? I'm on that pathway of sanctification, and I want to be more Christ-like, okay? I don't want to be God. I want to be more Christ-like. I'll be light years away from being that on a day of judgment, but that's where I want to be. And with that, and with the humility comes a lot of success. So yeah, I understand it's hard to hear, but it is the truth, these things. But also at some point, you get to a place, or you should get to a place, where the struggle isn't that hard anymore. It's just not that hard. You know, there's something where you can go weeks, months, whatever, and not think about it at all. You know, I rarely ever think and say, oh my gosh, I have a sex addiction. Don't think about it because it's not there. So anyway, I hope that helps. It, it does. And, you know, I'm in the daily reprieve and I think about every day only because I'm doing my meditations and things every single day. So um, the last question is, um, would you please give your email again for the April event? Yes, it's uh, innerchildmodel at gmail.com. So innerchildmodel 
at gmail.com. And Cameron, we're going to collect the rest of these questions. Thank you. I, did, you I just did. Yes. And because oh, we are going to get timed out and I don't want to be mid-sentence. Well, so. well, we got a ton of them. That's what we're doing in two weeks. We're going to answer okay. these and you guys come back with your other questions. I know you like my Q&As and you make it easy. I don't have to think of any content. <sighs> And he says that, and then he invariably comes up with, well, I've just got a little short. I so know. We'll, so I, we'll I, see. I, I think do. I still have old questions beyond that. So I'm going to oh, actually hold you to, to the December uh, Thursday, December 5th will be from 11 to noon Pacific time will be all Q&A. We're going to catch up. Okay. Yeah, it's really interesting. Real fast. I know you have to run, but you no, know, when, I, when I did the promotion and to put out there, and I, I put the fact it's a different day, it's a different time, but it's the same intensity. And I think we bought the same intensity today. So. I think so too. So and Thank thanks to everybody for the great questions. We really appreciate it. See you in yeah, a few weeks we after anything. Happy Thanksgiving Bye. to those in the US. You too. Bye. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye.